Welcome to One on One, the Daily Items weekly digital program featuring Susquehanna Valley newsmakers interviewed by Daily Item reporters. Today's guest is TJ Ike, President and CEO of the Central Pennsylvania Chamber of Commerce, interviewed by Rick Dandies. The Sunbury Motor Company. Austin Martin, Kia Elite Sales Consultant, Maranatha Christian School. Amber Wren, Certified Hyundai and Lincoln Sales Consultant, Seal and Traveria High School. Ian Chukuski, Certified Ford Sales Professional, Mount Carmel and Shemokin area. Christopher Stengline, Ford Certified Sales Consultant, Seal and Traveria High School. Tom Mertz, fourth generation owner, Sunbury Motor Company, Shikolini High School. A tradition of trust since 1915. Welcome to another edition of One on One. I'm Rick Dandis, and today we're speaking with T.J. Ike, who's the president and CEO of the Central Pennsylvania Chamber of Commerce. There, I got it right. You did. I wasn't sure I would. <laughs> uh, you do so many things in the community. I thought maybe we would start by uh, how long have you been with the chamber, and how many members do you have, and let's talk about some of the things you're doing these days. Sure. I actually started here at the Central Pennsylvania Chamber of Commerce in March of 2011 and I have uh, been in various positions since then. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can say that I've uh, kind of climbed my way up. And in October of 2018, I, excuse me, October of 2017, I was- uh, Time flies. Yeah, I, I was um, a candidate for the position. And with uh, almost 80 some candidates, I was uh, reluctant to throw my hat in the ring, but I did and I have not looked back. I am so excited that I have this position to be able to do all the things that this organization can do. And when I started in 2011, we were in the 200 range of businesses and organizations we represented wow. and the low 200s. And today I am proud to say that we have been flirting with 500. Wow, that's uh... Um, so that's pretty remarkable for an organization of our size. We have four staffers full time and that's the highest staff that we've had as well. So um, we don't want to take any chances of jeopardizing the quality of product and service. So as we grow, we have intended on increasing our team as well. Well, just to let people know, uh, the Central PA Chamber, you cover a wide area? We do. So there are chambers of commerce across the entire Commonwealth. Um, we actually meet with all of the chambers of the Commonwealth once a year for a conference. Mm -hmm. And um, most folks think there are boundaries or um, certain you know, areas, yeah, yeah. Um, there are not. Yeah. We have members in uh, all the surrounding counties. We also have members out of state. We have some members in Canada. Um, if they have a product or a service or a need for our support, our marketing, our expertise, our seminar and training, our connections, um, we're here for them. So there are no boundaries. A lot of folks belong to multiple organizations like ours, and we encourage that. And by doing so, we offer a discount. So if you belong to a similar organization, we actually recognize that you are supporting so several organizations, and we uh, give you a discount so you can enjoy them all. Well, I mean, you work with businesses, uh, I assume, to bring them in and to help them out. Uh, and uh, I mean, there's nothing more important in a job economy where people need jobs, so you need, you need businesses thriving. Absolutely. And uh, early in my tenure as president, we started something called Inside Jobs Tours. And what we do is a lot of times we all know, oh, I think this product's made locally, but you don't know the story behind it or uh -huh. the drive. So we take up businesses that would like us to come visit. We open it to our membership and we go and visit the sites. They can be manufacturing sites, they can be industrial, they can be retail, um, restaurants, but we go behind the scenes and learn the whole story and their needs. And a lot of times those folks coming on the tours um, they're so intrigued by what's happening in our area, and then they realize they should be doing business with someone local and sharing services and products, and it comes full circle. Um, those things are really exciting. You wouldn't think a tour of the Milton Regional Sewer Authority would be fascinating, but it is, and so fascinating that we've had to do it twice now. And um, it's much unlike any other facility of its type in the, in the whole Commonwealth, yeah. and pretty much, I'd say, uh, in the U.S., so it's really exciting to be able to let folks go behind the scenes and show, show off what they do a little bit. Uh, let's talk about some of the things you provide to your membership. And again, I want to emphasize that all this, I want to bring it back to the fact that these help with jobs. Absolutely. Uh, you talked, before we went on video, we talked a little bit about how you helped, you've helped some 
some companies. Uh, talk about some of the programs that you have. Sure. So economic development is a big part of the Central Pennsylvania Chamber of Commerce. Um, we have an entity within the chamber. It's called MEDA, Milton Area Industrial Development Association. Uh -huh. um, MEDA, much unknown to folks, purchased 200 acres in the industrial park, um, I think in the 1960s. And uh, we have worked to cultivate that land into opportunities. And currently, there are only about, I say, just less than 60 acres available for purchase that are not utilized. And uh, those are being worked into a project currently. So when I took on the position, economic development was something that we hadn't been focusing on over the, the previous few years. And I made it my mission, and uh, we were able to get a KOZ status, which is a Keystone Opportunity Zone and help businesses who want to grow and maybe um, take up residence in a larger, bigger venue. And those things have been unraveling since we got the notification from the governor earlier um, this year that we were approved. Uh, I think a lot of people who are watching this might not be business people. Explain what exactly is a KOC. So there are a lot of sites throughout the state that are underutilized or underdeveloped or deteriorating. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure we all see a lot of new places going up, but you wonder about those old places that are sitting going vacant. And um, that's pretty much the object of a KOZ. And it's something the state can do at any time with any governor in charge. And uh, they can do it or not do it. So you don't know if you don't take the opportunity when it arises how much, you know, how more frequently it's gonna be offered. Um, so when we heard about this earlier in my tenure in uh, late last year, uh -huh. we jumped on it and full force, it's a lot of effort, but it reaps rewards because these sites that have been deteriorated for well over a decade are getting much new attraction and um, it just helps leverage some issues that the folks might need to overcome when taking up a site that's been deteriorated for so long. The people get tax breaks? They do. They will get a tax break for 10 years from their state, local, and federal taxes. Uh, but they also receive some ample opportunities with funding and kind of get put to the top of the list for help in other areas as well. Yeah. And if you imagine taking on a site that really needs a lot of TLC to bring it back to life, those things are going to overcome some of the obstacles. Um, and then the jobs that they bring in and the work they bring in to recreate these facilities back to you know, sustainable use uh, brings uh, you know, direct revenue right away. Yeah. Uh, just a few more things. Let's talk about, uh, I know you run educational programs. You recently ran uh, a leadership event. Typically, tell me what, what that sure. was. I've so heard really good things about we, that. Uh, we typically run some of our trainings here in our facility on a regular monthly basis for all types of uh, different trainings that folks need. However, um, we took on a little bit of a challenge last year and opted to host an event that's done globally. And it is uh, an event that is simultaneously cast across the globe. And we were a host site. We partnered with Bucknell University. Yeah, Bucknell, yeah. And it was phenomenal. Um, some folks were unfamiliar with it or unsure. I had attended it in other venues. So I knew the quality. And once folks were exposed, they would appreciate it. And uh, we did surveys, post surveys. And everyone that attended said, oh my gosh, I'm coming back next year and I'm bringing my team. So we've already committed to hosting it in 2020 on May 7th. And we actually have folks registered already wow. for next May. Wow, pretty cool, pretty cool. We're talking with TJ Ike, CEO and president of the Central Pennsylvania Chamber of Commerce. We'll be right back. The Sunbury Motor Company. Austin Martin, Kia Elite Sales Consultant, Maranatha Christian School. Amber Wren, Certified Hyundai and Lincoln Sales Consultant, Seal and Traveria High School. Ian Chukuski, Certified Ford Sales Professional, Mount Carmel and Shemokin area. Christopher Stengline, Ford Certified Sales Consultant, Seal and Traveria High School. Tom Mertz, fourth generation owner, Sunbury Motor Company, Shikolini High School. A tradition of trust since 1915. We're back uh, and we're speaking with TJ Ike the CEO and president of uh, the Central Pennsylvania Chamber of Commerce. Yes. Uh, we've had a pretty good discussion so far, but now I wanted to like uh, gaze into the future, so, as it were. Uh, I attended, as did you, the, uh, the Patent Warehouse uh, event, which is very impressive. Absolutely. And they have a lot of plans to expand. And I mean, I think there's a lot going on not just economically around here, but some of the things that you planned. Could you talk a little about that? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I too agree. The, the event there was just miraculous, what all they've done over the years. And it's a testament to the folks here. And that's what we try to do as well, is help to develop the folks. 
Um, there's so many projects that we're trying to do to keep folks abreast of current happenings and involved and engaged. Engagement is huge. Right. And uh, some of the things that we've been trying to do is also train folks for leadership positions, not only in their employment, but there are a lot of not-for-profits and a lot of organizations that we represent that have boards. And so we have uh, took on a project about three years ago that came to life earlier this year, and we're going to host another class in October of this year as well, is Raising the Board. And it's educating folks that when they're on a board, that they need to have a certain skill set. And maybe if they don't have it, we can help them develop it. Mm -hmm. You want to be the most um, adequate person to serve on a board and have your due diligence and know how to read financials and all the things that you hear horror stories on, on organizations that are taken for granted or um, you know, misled, if you would. Those are things that entrepreneurs who have small businesses need to know. They might not... Uh... Absolutely. Um, we you know, continually have seminars that help the small businesses who can't afford the time or the, the uh, funds to send somebody for an out-of-town training expense. So that's why we hold so many trainings here that are compacted. We get a lot done in a day's time and a very nominal fee, if any, for the folks to attend. And, and you have video facilities and audio facilities. Yeah, it's a great space. Here. We do. We have multiple facilities within that our members are allowed to use at any time, 24-7. So folks can come after business hours, weekends, um, and multiple capabilities. We try to adjust for whatever the needs may be for our members. Uh, let's talk. You, you mentioned a little while ago about a. Uh Doing some TV, possibly. Yeah, so we do a monthly news magazine, which has come light years since we added a communications director. But um, we know that folks like to do things in other avenues as well. So last year, I believe it was, we implemented an IYB, It's Your Business Television. It's currently on YouTube and on our website. However, um, we just negotiated some talks with a member who's um, working to help us land a spot on local DISH network television station. So that's really neat because it features all the successes and happenings of our members. Our magazine and our television series are about our members, not about the Central PA Chamber, but about the successes that our members are doing. Mm -hmm. And that, I'll bring it back, and that always translates to a better economy in this area. Absolutely. Um, you know, encouraging folks to work together and to find ways, you know, partnerships are huge. We have really, really worked on a lot of new partnerships over the last several months. Um, as you always hear, there's power in numbers, but also there can be savings in many different ways if we work together as a, a one project. TJ, uh, that's probably my final question, but uh, uh, what gratifies you the most about what you've been doing? You've been doing this now in this position for about two years now? Yeah. I, what, what, what do you find most gratifying? About you know, that? every day I think it's something different, but I just like having an impact on people, uh, on the region, and just knowing that you make a difference every day, you know, however big or small. Um, if you're making a difference, you know, it just, it's gratifying in so many ways. Okay. We've been speaking with uh, T.J. Ike, and uh, who's the president and CEO of uh, Central Pennsylvania Chamber of Commerce. Thanks a lot for oh, being with us. Thank you and very we'll much. And we'll be back again uh, with another edition of One on One. Thanks for watching One on One. Be sure to tune in next week for another edition.